These sounds would be generated by drawing on a glass slide. A light dot would trace the waveform and the sound generator would provide a tone based on the shape the dot followed. Further drawing on 35mm film strips was needed if you wanted to change the character of a note, like the pitch or echo. I thought if one could break down the whole process into separate parameters, then define each of these in a drawing, which one could go back and rub out if one didn't want what one had done, uh, this would both simplify the thing, it would make it much quicker, and I think uh, open up completely new sounds. It's thought the machine was monophonic, that is, it could only play one note at once. Although the curators are not entirely sure, there was space for it to play up to four notes together. The reason it's so difficult to tell is that the machine was always being tweaked and modified throughout its life. As the Oramix machine is too fragile to restore to playable order, there's an interactive visual display that lets visitors play with a virtual machine. There's even an Oramix iPhone app for those who wish to take matters into their own hands.